This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about indiscretion of an American wife, a.k.a. Terminal Station, a.k.a. Station Termini, from 1953, directed by Vittorio De Sica. This film's tagline, RJ. Mm-hmm. This longing, this yearning, mm. this wanting. While on vacation in Rome, okay. married... <laughs> American Mary Forbes becomes entangled in an affair mm-hmm. with an Italian man, Giovanni Doria. As she prepares to leave Italy, Giovanni confesses his love for her. He doesn't want her to go. Together, they wander the railroad station where Mary is to take the train to Paris, then ultimately reunite with her husband and daughter in Philadelphia. Will she throw away her old life for this passionate new romance? It's a good question. So this is a first time watch for me, mm-hmm. uh, and the hunt for this film was a bit odd because you figure this is the Criterion film. It's called Indiscretion of an American Wife, mm-hmm. but that's not the movie's like it's not the real title of the movie. Uh, I also found that a little confusing. Yes, and you, uh, you, when you, I watched you messaged movie... me very alarmed that uh, we had somehow messed up. But then I corrected mm-hmm. you because I had read the Wikipedia several months ago when I was uh, making sure that everything would align properly when it came to sourcing watching this stuff. Because mm-hmm. this is out of print, I think, and is not on the mm-hmm. Criterion channel. And mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, the only version you can watch is this American cut of the film that uh, the producer, David O. Selznick, put together. That's 63 minutes long, which is included right. on the DVD. But there's also the version that uh, Vittorio De Sica made, which is an hour and a half long. And that's the one that's called Terminal Station. The Why, it, why so many names, Jer? Uh, because uh, Terminal Station sounds... Real, neo real, neo clinical Italian neo real, and it's called Terminal Station because that's where it's set. It's real, it's a real station that still functions to this day. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, that makes yeah. some sense, I guess. Yeah, it's it's still it's like a major hub or one of those mm. like major hubs in Rome still. So that's okay. what so that's what they called it. So this gets to enter uh, what I lovingly refer to as colonial genital adventures. So excuse me. So we have summertime, we have mm-hmm. Hiroshima, Mon Amour, and mm-hmm. now we have Indiscretion of an American Wife. These films about women traveling abroad, perhaps mm-hmm. to Italy, perhaps to Japan, perhaps, perhaps, and uh-huh. uh, they hook up with a uh, a native man, a man from mm-hmm. the a man from the city. And they have a torrid love affair, and now she must make a decision. I mean, uh, what kind and, of decision? And, and, and the other thing with these films is they're all from the fifties. <laughs> do you think it was maybe something that was happening a lot, or do you think it was a just lot, a, a lot of forbid, a lot of forbidden flu- desire? All, all these floozies flying around, banging dudes oh. on their husbands. Well, you said it. Man. It, it was Not t- me. maybe tapping into that fear or fantasy. All that, <gasps> all that, all that freedom women are experiencing. <laughs> Uh, who, who, who who let that happen? Who let that happen? So, and so we have that like thorough line between these Criterion movies we've watched over the years, and we mm-hmm. even have like a, a sprinkling of uh, brief encounter. I feel a little bit. There was a train in that one too. There was, and uh, all three movies handle the situation differently. They're all like it is all yeah. about like problem solving. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. storytelling, you have these, these uh, this idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they all have had their own unique takes, I guess, on it to, to various degrees. So this one, uh, the one thing that I thought was interesting with this movie uh, is it's set yeah. in media res. The story's already happened. It's in motion and it catches you up. There's no flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, it is set at the end of the affair or attraction. And she's mm-hmm. she's kind of like because the movie so opens up with um, oh, what's the actress's name? Oh, Greta Garbo? No, <laughs> I I totally Jennifer Jones. <laughs> Jessica Jones? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, it's Jennifer Jones. Jennifer dude. Jones. Okay, perfect. I was yeah. like, I, I kept second guessing myself. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So yeah, mm-hmm. Jennifer Jones, who's the wife 
of David Oselznick, the producer, who commissioned this film because he wanted to make a movie for her. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll get into that part. Mm-hmm. So she shows up and she's like kind of doing this like slow, like kind of walk up to this Italian apartment. And she's walking up these stairs. It's very drawn out as the credits go over, telling us mm-hmm. all the production personnel stuff. And then she's she's about to hit that doorbell. But then she doesn't. And you're like, <gasps> and you're like what's going on? What's all this visual storytelling? And then she runs visual. away. And then she gets to the trip back. She goes to this train station, this like really great looking modernist architecture that's kind of like it borders somewhere between like that uh Mussolini fascist architecture into modernist because it got like half built at one point and then it got finished sure. in the subsequent years so like I thought it was like a really nice space and I do always appreciate a movie that's shot on location and not on sets which this mm-hmm. movie is so uh the, the, the first 20 minutes is all her like kind of running through the minutia of trying to get a ticket <laughs> Mm-hmm. and uh, the times and like, oh boy, I just missed this one. I'm going to have to wait. And then we have these like uh-huh. flocks of Italian priests and all these people throughout the whole movie. We have all this like backdrop material, of, like people that you keep seeing repeating back and forth. They're, li- mm-hmm. they're living their lives. You have sick dying women, um, like school, like huge, like flocks of little kids that kind mm-hmm. of, that all that flavor, I guess, of uh, you would expect, I guess, from the neo realist school. <laughs> Uh, it makes me ugh, makes me smile just saying that word. Mm. Anyway, well, how come? Why does that make you happy? Uh, Neo realist. <laughs> it just it just it just does, you know. So, mm-hmm. and now we have Montgomery Cliff. He's an Italian man. Sure is. And he's come looking for Jennifer Jones. He's like, "What's going on? Why, why are you just leaving me like this?" Things were going so great. Look at look mm-hmm. at my eyes and eyebrows. Look at look at my face. Boy, oh boy, I don't I don't know what's going on with this. There's some, there's some sort of explanation about how uh, his mom is not Italian, or she's American, but and his dad is Italian, so that makes it, him Italian. There was some kind of something being discussed in this yeah. movie. Yeah. This is about then when he throws out the line, you American women are much too emancipated. <laughs> uh what do you think he meant? <laughs> they're they're not uh they're not trained like good Italian women because uh we also get an exchange uh which I've got the quote here between mm-hmm. uh, old, old Giovanni and Mary. Hit me with that. What? Mend my clothes and cook my dinner? You wouldn't like that? Oh, I would. Don't forget, I'm an Italian too. If you didn't behave yourself in action, waves hand, I'd beat you. Mary Forbes nervously laughs. Giovanni, you wouldn't. Would you? Giovanni, I would. Naturally. Naturally. And you- uh, it's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. But then later on. <laughs> he. Uh, what happens later on he, here? Uh, he lights her up right in, right in public. Gives her a nice mm-hmm. big old wallop across the face. And, uh, yeah, it's like, w- wait a minute. What's this movie about? <laughs> and even, like, before that, there, there's, like, a lot of signs here. There's a lot of little moments. Like, when they sit down mm-hmm. in, the, in a cafe because wait- she's decided to wait a little bit. She's got time. She doesn't want to leave the station yet. And uh, she's, she just want to chat with this through because she still has, obviously, very strong feelings for this Giovanni man clearly mm-hmm. uh and he's, he he like reaches over and takes her hat off she's like oh what you don't like my hat he's like he's like that's a smug little hat <laughs> like, okay did you think it was smug because i thought it was a pretty fine hat it was a fine hat it was a fine hat like i know you're not a big hat guy because i i heard they changed the way your head looks but like i thought i, I, I mean well, as far as hats i mean go, i've sent you that photo of me with the Baylog auction hat yeah, you have. And like I remember the response was like, was that with this dude's hat? He looks strange. Was that with this dude's head even? Yeah. I look, even I, I look like a completely different person. Yeah. But I didn't I at at no point did I find it smug. No, not at all. And yeah. then okay. And then we get her nephew who comes along, mm-hmm. wide eyed little boy, so excited to see his auntie off. And <laughs> then we get Giovanni's face. <laughs> Or he just looks horrified, and uh, hey, whoa! You never said nothing about no kids. But he's just oh man, it's kind of a crazed look in his eyes. And mm-hmm. then and then he smacks her one, 
and she doesn't like that very much. And so nope. she she takes off, and he's like, "What? What? What? What about this?" And he's like being like ornery and just annoying. And uh, and then later, when like she's like kind of like you know pouting, apparently, like, "Hmm, well, how mm-hmm. dare he? I I, I don't want to put up with this." But then he catches up with her. He, she's on the other side of this platform, and he's like. Mary, Mary, and he starts running across the train tracks, and there's a train coming, and everyone's like, "Whoa, what is? What are you doing, dude?" And they all try to like stop him, and he just doesn't care. He doesn't care, and he runs mm-hmm. right in front of this oncoming train with rear projection, and then he lands on the other side, and they're like, "Oh, hey, oh, oh!" And then she's, oh. and she's of course like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm so moved." Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't care about his own life because that's normal. <laughs> it's like uh, that's all isn't that i mean is the message that women just want guys to like one big grand gesture and then a lifetime of beatings no problem uh, maybe Mayhaps. i don't know that's a it's a different set of values trucking along here in the 1950s so yeah so what happens then well they uh they go find a a nice quiet little cabin on a train that's like shut down for the night they decide to shack up a little and then the train cops show up and they're like no uh uh you got to go to jail now and he's like no just let her go she's got a train to catch i'll i'll take the heat i'm that i'm a good guy mm-hmm. and they're like hey hey you know they they try all the weaslings and stuff like that and there's like a bunch of faux drama about this whole shit and then eventually spoilers he sends her off packing because that's the right thing to do. And uh, he, if you love he, him, let him let him go, Jer. He's on that train, and then he walks mm-hmm. off the moving train and just wipes out hard. Uh, yeah, he does. And you know, I've been in a similar situation. I don't know if you know this, but when I was in junior high, I, I went off the back of a truck. Yep. And uh, <laughs> but I was t- I was twelve. Yep. Uh, so, so like I didn't realize that yeah. like you can't go from moving to not moving yeah. without any recourse. Uh but your body, you know, that's not how momentum works and momentum, you know, momentum, yeah. kinetic energy and things and potential energy and you know all sorts of energy. And uh you know what happened when I wiped out? It sucked. I broke like all my teeth and stuff like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if you yeah, my my top deck, these are all fake. Oh, cuz I broke them all. Uh I fell off a truck like him <laughs> when he wiped out. I actually got huge flashbacks from that. I was like, hey, that happened to me. But I was a little, little kid. He was a grown man. He should have known better. Exactly. I mean, exactly. I guess even at this point, I wouldn't have. I mean, I guess I might make the same mistake as Giovanni. Just, oh, yeah. walk right off this moving vehicle. Yeah, because you don't realize, right? I'm invincible. Like, yeah, the the, moment, the momentum of it. You're, I, you're I, per, I, I prefer the momentum. The momentum of the thing you're moving, and it's just like, oh, I'm a fall. Hey, so yes, this movie. So uh-huh. the biggest failure failure of this movie for me is I am never at any point convinced that this American wife is being so wooed and won over by this seemingly unstable man. Seemingly correct. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I so that that's a problem. Uh, yeah, I think there's a few problems, my man. Yes. Uh, that, that's definitely one that's, of them. That's definitely a, a flaw, I think, of the structure of this movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, so, like I said, I, I like that it's shot on location. That mm-hmm. it, it, it's all one location, too. They never leave the train station. That's pretty neat. Uh, and it's, it's pretty well told in real time. It takes yeah. place over the course of the entire hour and a half. So, and that's about it. Th- those are the things that, uh or to write home about. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I, it's a, this is an odd movie because I don't think anybody really likes this movie very much. In fact, I kind of like, why is this part of the criterion collection other than the novelty of it, the the historical Mm -hmm. story. But I feel like that's not enough. (laughs) The fact that, okay, so I'll get into a little bit of the production stuff maybe now, and then I'll let you, and then I'll let you take over. So one of the things that you see right off the bat like for production stuff is, hey, Truman Capote is credited as writing this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Apparently, though, according to Wikipedia, he says or claimed that he only wrote two scenes. And that's Mm -hmm. it. That's the only thing he involved with. And uh, as I mentioned before, the movie was uh, commissioned by the producer, David O'Selznick, the man who uh, brought us Gone with the Wind. 
So he was right. riding high, big, big-headed uh, Hollywood producer. He's got his wife, Jennifer Jones. He's like, she's a babe. I'm going to make her a star. And uh, so they did a bit of a star search, finding a director. And it's like this Vittorio De Sica. It's like, this guy, he's a big director. We, we want only the best. And they're going to tell the story that I want told. And so this guy apparently just took over production. Like, he was, like, overproducing, mm-hmm. which is, like, in that weird transition phase, too, where, you know, our uh, attachments to things like auteur theory, where it's, like, the director who mm-hmm. makes these things. But, I mean, before that, it was a director like a David O. Selznick. Right. He, he wants – he's making this movie. He's telling this guy, you're going to do it this way. Supposedly, he was writing 40 to 50-page letters to DeSica, like, notes about this movie. But the problem is Desika doesn't know any English. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, at first when I was watching it, I was like, it's kind of strange that there's there's this weird mix here. This is almost like European horror movies where you know people are speaking different languages and their subtitles popping up sometimes and not in others. Are you saying it's because this dude didn't know English? I'm saying that this movie's a, kind of a on the fiasco side in a production element. Um, I think I follow. The movie was pretty well disowned by uh, Montgomery Cliff. He was not happy with this movie at all. Um, And so, so the seeker hands in this hour and a half cut, the one that we watched and Selznick's like, fuck this. This isn't my Mm -hmm. vision. He takes it. He makes it 63 minutes long. So he just chops out 25 (laughs) minutes gone and Mm -hmm. uh, gives it its new title. It's like, no one knows what this terminal station is. Let's call it indiscretion of an American wife. Oh, baby. What do you think? What do you think indiscretion means? It means bang. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, 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 it's all about leaving it to the imagination. Like, how how indiscreet is she going to get? And, like, you have all these women lining Ooh. up to go, you know, have the case of the vapors. You have all these men who are like, yeah. What does she do? <laughs> like, oh my god! So that they're tap- yeah, the, it's, uh, it's exploitation. Like it's a total exploitation movie. And then they go to the movie theater, and then they get to watch this. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of fits in with the movie too, because as she walks by, you get all those daunting eyes of men that are just oh, like, "Oh yeah," is like, "What's that bitch wearing well, underneath?" Pardon, pardon me. That's a line in this movie, Jared. You can tell from their eyes. They say that. And then even the dude, you know, he's slapping women around. And he's like, what you got on under there? Under your billet. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know. So, yeah, that all said, it is a flawed movie. (laughs) I was was walking in and out at some points. I was just like, yeah, I know where this I know I know where it's going. And there's nothing in the telling. There's no really great characters, good writing, mm-hmm. dialogue. It just seems so by the numbers. It's it's a strange movie because it's this hybrid too between you have like this the the, the king of the Italian neo realist movies, and you have David Russell trying to do this like American melodrama. And there's like obviously like melodramatic sentimentality in uh, De Sica's movies, like even in Umberto D, very sentimental, but it just doesn't work. Like it, it never comes together into anything. No, it doesn't. So, and like, so RJ, yeah. <laughs> well, what did you think of this indiscretion? More like in the shit shin. This one doesn't lend itself better to that shit uh, thing that I do. Yeah. You know, indiscretion of an American shit. It doesn't sound <laughs> as good. Maybe, maybe that'll be my review, I guess. Um, by no means do I think that this is a poorly made movie. Because, like, it's there's some shots that are really nice. Like, there's one scene where she's, like, standing, like, on the walkway and where the train's going to come in and the light's coming through and you're just like, oh, shit, that looks pretty nice. But then you got, a uh, like, Italian Tom Cruise walking around beating bitches up and he's just like, oh, make with the sketty. Uh, mend my clothes. Did, did it make you think back to beef steaks? Well, you get offered tortellini and you want beef steak. Uh, I think it's funny that you mentioned summertime and, uh, like, so you mentioned summertime yep. and Hiroshima Mon Amour. Yep. And uh, even Brief Encounter, all three of which I thought were good shows. 
brief encounter being the best of all of those. But yes. uh, I, I know I'm I'm the minority here, but I actually think summertime is good. Well, so I know uh, Oliver Granger gave that bad boy five stars. Well, there you go. There you go, that my movie, man. But that movie's not very good. Just just to be clear, people. Well, that's the personal opinion of uh, a co-host of a global phen- phenom, a uh, globally internationally recognized podcast. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, summertime rules. Uh, that's agreed upon by everyone, and uh, it does. It definitely tries to like. It's it's a movie that is in the same same hood. <laughs> Like, if you will, it's like in the same spirit of all those movies, oeuvre, but it doesn't really do any of that stuff. And I think like, I think the biggest thing against this is it's just like, I don't know how it played then, but even just watching it now, you're just kind of like, this guy sucks. I I don't think it played well. Yeah. Cause you're like, you're like, why? Cause I mean, you can, we've had other situations where the man has either been like distant or a little bit like not the nicest like even in summertime like that dude's a little distant and but there's still something believable about it and i think it's because again in summertime uh, our leading lady you feel bad for her and sad but not because like you the guy is a prick it's just like she's got a sad story she's just like lonely in this one it's it's not that she's lonely like it almost like vilifies her for like i don't know it's it's the stance where I feel like you could fall into a lot of these uh, like romance on the run things like you were talking about where it's like the married woman finding foreign love. And it's just like, oh, yeah, it's like, look at her being all ravaged by these foreigners in their own country, in their own country. It's like her infidelitous ways. Yeah, she's insatiable because I don't let don't let your ladies travel abroad. (laughs) Well, exactly. And I mean, (laughs) I tell the same thing to my wife all the time too. It's like, hey, don't go anywhere alone. You come here all the time. Uh, I, you know, there, there's something to it though. I think. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's something to it's it. Like, Cause it's yeah, you know, it's like, oh, you're traveling alone with unescorted without a man. It's like, mm. come on over here, floozy. Well, I mean, man or woman traveling alone seems like a dangerous oh, endeavor. I, I don't no know. matter I, where you I, are I, in the I, world. I've, I've seen those plane loads filled with uh, lonely men. I don't know if people are uh, kicking down their doors. They have to They have to make their opportunities. Uh, maybe you the just go to the, maybe you shop at the wrong stores, Jer. I can help you out with that. Hey, do you know what I mean? The man store. <laughs> do, do you get it? Anyways, go on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I feel like I think the thing about this that it just like it loses you is because he's kind of a dick. Like not even just hitting her. Cause you're like, yeah, that's very clearly well, bad. It's definitely like they're trying but, to like, do his this. Approach. It does feel like they're kind of, there's like a, he's trying to be like Marlon Brando. Who's something act, he's acting with those eyes. It's like, Oh, <sighs> I'm going to talk oh. to you, baby. Uh, the only kid, the only person I really sympathized for was the kid who's just like that piece of shit. Wouldn't yeah. I hit you if I was around and you're like, you tell him Timmy. Yeah. I'm assuming his name was Timmy. I don't Timmy, Jimmy, whatever the, what the fuck ever it was. Joey, Jimmy, Jojo, Joey, Jimmy, Jojo. Uh, so you feel for that kid. And like, you do a few, like you don't feel like nothing towards her because obviously you do sympathize for her, but it's, it's more like do the way you, out. Though? Well, what I was kind of just like, I was like, I think she just went after the wrong guy. And he's like, and she is married. Yeah. So there, there's that. You have to like, yeah. Like, so like, like I said, the one thing I found interesting was that they didn't show any of the affair stuff. They didn't show like the, the meat cute, the yeah. whatever. If yeah. they actually, if they actually had sex, they don't do that. They just, they skip ahead all past that point, And then you get the laugh from it, which is interesting. Like I really do like that idea. And there's all these factors there that should make this a more interesting movie, but it just doesn't, it doesn't deliver. The writing's not there. The characters aren't there. No, it's not. Like, the writing isn't there. The characters aren't there. And then, I don't know, none of it, none of it works together very well. Or, or none of it works on its own. Because it's like, things don't have to be, like, connected all together or anything like that. It's just those individual elements don't even really work on their own in some of these situations. Like, what they're talking about is, like, we got the greatest romance of all time he's like look look at how look at how passionate we are and she's like well not really (laughs) 
Oh, really? And then even like the cl- like the stuff that comes afterwards, where it's like the conflict is like, oh shit, they're in trouble by the law, and it's like, yeah. you were on a train talking to each other. They're like, we know what that's code for. Yeah, you've been banging for weeks. It's like you you floozies, and you're just like, <laughs> all right, you're like I know I know that like people were a lot more judgmental then. Hey man, people are judgmental now, but at the same time, it's like. I don't know this false like tension based on these things that like, what does it matter? Why is this a thing on this? Yeah. Um, yeah. I did check out some of the hour long cut. Just, just oh, yeah, how was that? Um, it's just like the American version. It's kind of like all that storytelling that DeSica would probably put in there, the pacing, the tone, all gone. It's just very mm-hmm. meat and potatoes. So, uh, it's just so strange because, like, the, how they re-edit things, it's always curious. Where they have her, like, writing the note, and then they're flashing back to her, like, walking up to the apartment, and then her finishing writing the note and then sending it off. There's none of that, like, kind of, like, weird, like, her having a little bit of uh, an internal life and, like, thinking about this and having doubts and uh, questioning herself. That's all gone. It's just kind of like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm done. Here's the letter. Smell you later. And then... Then he shows up and like, it seems like they, like the movie is definitely like, you know, they're chopping out half hour out of it. So a lot of things falling by the wayside, which I don't think it doesn't change the fact that the story is just not that good. In fact, it like, it, it underlines why the story, like why it's not that great of a movie. Cause the story is just not there. Mm-hmm. And it's not in the make, it's not even like the making. I think the movie is as well made as could be made, but there's some real serious things where it's like, this was like a work for hire thing that I don't think anybody was attached to other than uh oh selznick yeah that's uh i mean that's a good way to put it too it's like yeah it doesn't really feel like anybody's just that producer dude no just him dude doesn't feel like anyone else's so but why should we give a shit yeah but oh uh but rj were you aware mm-hmm. that there is a made for tv movie from 1998 I was not. Who's in it? Nick Nolte? Ann Archer. And, Who's that? Uh, uh, actress. Okay. But you can look her up. It's, it's Ann Archer. Sure. I don't know. She's a, she's like a kind of a celebrity. I, I've heard of Ann her. Ann Archer? Ann Archer. All right. Do you think it's A-N-N or A-N-N-E? I'd probably A-N-N-E. Yeah, but you know some people out there are just A-N-N. I'm, I'm sure Google will uh, correct you. All right, Ann Archer, what was your deal? Fatal Attraction, Patriot Games, Clear and pe- Present Danger, Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past, Body of Evidence, Narrow Margin, Good Guys Wear Black, Paradise Alley, uh, Rules of Engagement, Man of the House, a lot of Tommy Lee Jones and Harrison Ford films, Jeremy. Mm-hmm. They, they loved her. Uncle Nino. <laughs> If you've ever seen that future creep shortcuts, good stuff. All good stuff. A lot of Cuba Gooding Jr. movies too. Okay, I'm done. So this movie, she plays the wife of uh-huh. a ambassador. Sure. With, and they're, they've traveled to. They're in Italy with their child. Sure. And uh, he's I so busy with paperwork, he has no time to pay any attention to her. And so mm-hmm. she runs. She goes off and starts having a uh, the budding relationship with this uh, Italian man who's a uh, oh his own vineyard. That's what it is. Because, of course, mm. vineyards in Italy go so well together. But it, it, lay, it lays out the whole, like, seduction, the, the meet cute, and the, oh, will they, won't they, should they. And, uh, should they? <laughs> that's what the movie is. And I, uh, I just got so bored with this thing because I'm like, well, it's a remake. I already know where it's going to go, and there's nothing mm. good here. It does, I mean, to me, it does drive home that uh, Station Termini is not, horrible huh. it's just it just didn't ever never had a chance this it's one it's just not there man it's uh that talking about schmaltz oh boy lifetime movies they they do that very very well this wasn't even actually on letterbox until i uh created it mm-hmm. so that tells you where this is in the hearts of people barely a thousand people have watched the indiscretion of american wife movie and no one even cares about the uh, made for tv it's, it's like down there with the notorious t- TV remake thing. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think you 
the biggest takeaway from that, Jarrett, was that you said that you created the entry for this. And so why is there a problem for creating the entry to my, I think, brave retelling of Best Picture Award winner Green Book? Well, you have to perform it first. Well, we can do that. We can do that. As long as you say that you will create an entry for this. That's what matters. Is this a video or audio project? It can be whatever you want. I see. Okay. Uh, but no, yeah, I... I, I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad you uh, you braved the wilderness on that one. To uh, you fell on a grenade for us, and uh, you watched a little little remake. You know, it's it's you know, it's the least I could do. Yeah, for, I for mean, the sake it of is thoroughness. literally. No. Yeah, for the sake of thoroughness, I didn't even know because it's like I said, if people want us to review the remakes, they should email in or something because sometimes it's like we have no idea. This isn't a professional thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, Wikipedia came through. I didn't know until I got to the very last line of a paragraph. I went, whoa, there's a, there was a remake? I'm all about that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this remake business? And it's on YouTube? YouTube. Um, so, RJ, what do you think about it? Ta- yeah. <laughs> so stop it right there. Who Who hates indiscretion of an american wife can we before we even get to that okay, okay, okay. how many people okay 944 yeah, people have seen that. i was gonna i was gonna say how many people have even seen this fucking movie yeah it's not on the it's not on a lot of people's lips or minds mm, a minute on the lips forever on the hips am i right my man so who hates this <sighs> yeah we'll go with one star from doodler man that's a good name. I like that. Easily Vittorio De Sica's worst movie. Horribly melodramatic and uninteresting. Supposedly, this is 20 or so minutes shorter than the original cut called Terminal Station, but I can't imagine those extra minutes saving much. Mm. I don't know how to save much from Doodler, man. No, that's not. Uh, they have like a million five-star films, so that doesn't matter. But favorite films include No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Old Boy. My Life is a Dog. That's a creep. We covered that. Huh. And Ichi the Killer. Whoa. I don't know how My Life of a, as a Dog fits in there, but it, I guess that's a revenge flick. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you want you know what's a half star film for a doodler man? Hmm. Max Keeble's Big Move. <laughs> this has been brought up on our show before. Yeah. I don't know why Max Keeble's Big Move is a half a star film, and uh, I don't want to know. To be very honest with you. Okay. I don't want to know. Calum Reed, who I feel like we've talked about before, maybe. It's possible. We'll find out. One and a half star. Eight years after Brief Encounter opened the door for classy studies of adultery, we get this trek, inert, terribly cast, and burdened by crazily heightened moral overtones. Avoid at all costs. Uh, That's one of those words that uh, does come up frequently in these inert inert yeah. inert avoid at all costs well see when i read yeah. avoid at all costs i read that as a void at all costs i mean that that would be an awesome name for like a, a movie or a book or something avoid at all costs yeah it's kind of like the story of your life dude hey you know what i wouldn't avoid at all costs stop or my mom will shoot which appa- apparently Caleb reed thinks is a half star film i don't think that's fair Jingle All the Way, also not a half star film. Mickey Blue Eyes, also not a half star film. Nor is Problem Child or My Girl. Here's one that you will take qualm with Throw Mama from the Train, not half star. Or actually, the real one, Boys from Brazil, half star, apparently. Five star films are things like Roma, eighth grade, lots of criteria and stuff, junk that doesn't matter. Uh, Roma in eighth grade and uh, probably Roma in eighth grade. And finally, Gabe Leibowitz, one and a half star. Can't imagine DeSica ever had much control over this Oselznik sop fest as it goes against everything he established with his neo-realistic roots. Uh, Feels like a mix of Brief Encounter, which that's two references now, which I'm hardly nuts over anyway. And I wonder if it's because of the black and white photography and like the proximity of the faces in the train. I guess that's quite a bit, but I mean, I, yeah. And Before Sunrise, Gone Horribly Wrong, which is also about a train. And Before Sunrise is really good. The -hmm. script is packed with cliches. The music is all wrong. I honestly didn't even notice the music. Didn't even know it had music. Yeah. 
The situation is all predictable and silly. I, I wonder if that's the American cut. I don't even know if the, the Italian one did have music. And if it did, don't remember. Some nice misty cinematography of the train station is the only saving grace here. How did this get a Criterion release over Shoe Shine? I mean, I, I know that was what you were messaging me about the other night. I'm always talking about Shoe Shine, man. Yeah. Always. Always. Hey, you know Gabe Leibowitz? Yeah. More like Gabe Leibowitz shits. Whoa, okay. Ah. Slow it, slow it down there a little bit. Uh, I mean, a lot of the five star films are things like Umberto D and Knights of Cabiria and lots of Criterion films. Yep. But their favorite movie allegedly is Call Me by Your Name, and I will never not have a problem with that popping up on favorite films. <laughs> hey, you know what are some not half star films that this person thinks are half star films? My Giant. It's not a half star film at all. Blade Two, possibly one of the greatest films ever made. Not a half star film. Gone in 60 Seconds, Vanilla Sky, A Knight's Tale, Ace Ventura 2, When Nature Calls. No, no, no. No, no, no. Leave a shits indeed. But here's something you might... Kingpin half a star, apparently. Sister Act a half a star? Problem Child again? What do these people have wrong... <laughs> like, against Problem Child? I don't know. What's going on here, man? Cool Runnings. Half a star. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> It's like it's like in a personal attack on your childhood. I know all of these things. Kindergarten cap, uh, cop, a half star. Look who's talking to a half star. The air up there. Junior, Mrs. Doubtfire, the, Dennis the Menace. These are all half star films from Gabe no, Leibovitz. No, this, this 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 is this lame. Ninja Turtles, Twins. Look who's talking. The original. Come on, come on, Jer. <sighs> You uh, you got any final thoughts? Nah, it's a movie. No, and I mean, the question always arises. It's like, why is this in the Criterion? Why are any of these fucking movies in the Criterion? You know what I mean? Why? Why is the Criterion? Why is the Criterion? Is a question that I would like to ask. After the break, yeah, we run onto those train tracks, and then and then? We, then we just stop running. Uh, do you want to have a, a pact? <laughs> you still have to watch Suicide Club. I have seen Suicide Club. Have you? The Japanese movie? Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, you you watch, mean, when did you watch that? You gave that to me like years ago, dude. But I don't remember you watching it. Yeah, I did. Well, I, comment, so... I, I even commented you in the review. Oh, really? Yeah, and I mean, like looking back, it's a little cringeworthy, I think. Oh, probably because I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh Jared Duncan, they're... I'm gonna go delete this right now. Oh, good. That was yeah, like, be... oh, sorry, folks. Before before anyone can see what I reviewed for this movie. Well, anyway, it'll oh, be... I already deleted it. Oh, thank God. It, it'll be like fifteen. Yeah. See, see, how am I supposed to remember that? It'll be like that though. It'll be Suicide Club plus Indiscretion of American Wife. Plus. Problem child? Why not? <laughs> 